The Wood Whisperer is sponsored by Powermatic and Type Bond. You know, one thing I've noticed with the way that I store things in drawers is that I don't always make use of the vertical space. So a lot of times it's just things sitting on the bottom of the drawer with a bunch of airspace above it. So wouldn't it be cool if we can actually make use of that? Well, I was in my kitchen the other day and uh, we're lucky to have a couple of these organizers in there where if you slide back the top, you reveal a bottom section. So there's essentially built-in trays inside the drawers. So I figure, why can't we do that in the shop? So I tried to come up with a simple way to apply that to a shop drawer, but this is also something you can do in your kitchen. All right, so let me show you what it looks like. So here I've got all of my writing utensils and even some room to expand back here. But if I move this tray back, I've got some French curves, drawing aids, templates, things like that. So this is all stuff I like to store together. But things that if I were just to throw all this stuff into this wide open drawer, it would be really inefficient. Stuff would be hard to find. But now it's perfectly organized, right? So to do this, you're going to have to do a little bit of surgery to a pre-existing drawer. Your strategy might be different if you're building these drawers brand new. Let's start by destroying a drawer. I'm going to cut out the top half of the back, making a cut that's flush with the inside face. I removed the top screw, but I still have a brad nail to go through, so I use my hacksaw for that part. Then I can go back to the regular saw. I'm going about halfway down. Depending on how your drawer is constructed, you may have other obstacles to deal with. Just make sure that your drawer doesn't completely lose all structural integrity by doing this. At the bottom of the cut, I'll drill holes so that I have a starting point for my jigsaw. A piece of scrap helps prevent tear out when the bit punches through. I outfit my jigsaw with the smallest, highest tooth count blade that I own and start cutting along my line. The high tooth count helps prevent tear out with this plywood veneer. I can sand the inside and smooth the cuts and edges. Now I'll cut some strips of quarter inch plywood for our dividers and risers. The side risers should be cut just a hair taller than the remaining back piece that allows the tray to slide freely. The risers are cut to length and then glued to the insides. Now I measure for the trays. The trays should be about a sixteenth of an inch shy from the measured width. The depth can be the same as the drawer depth. The trays are super simple to make. I'll cut some scrap cherry down to about a half inch thick for the fronts and sides. And with the bottom cut to size, I can measure for the long side pieces and attach them with glue and brad nails. Once both sides are attached, I measure and cut the front and back pieces and install them with glue and brads. This project was meant to be just kind of a one afternoon thing, so nothing fancy here, but the trays will be durable enough for their intended purpose. Don't judge. The inside edges get a little chamfer that makes it a little bit easier on the fingers. Each tray is dropped in and sanded until the fit is what I need, snug for the bottom and sliding freely for the top. Keep in mind, you don't really need a bottom tray. I made one because I thought it might make it easier to remove and modify grid work that we'll install later. By the time I realized I really didn't need it, it was already made, so whatever. In order to easily slide the top tray back, we're gonna need to carve a small relief for fingers. I just use a rasp and carve a little recess. As designed, the top tray will just tip when it's pushed more than halfway back, so I'll install a couple of cleats to hold it in place. The paper just acts as a little spacer, providing clearance for the tray. The inner grid work will totally depend on what you want to store in there. I'm sketching mine out based on my extensive collection of name tags and hairnets. The dividers are made from quarter inch plywood and will receive complementary notches where the pieces cross over. I mark everything out and then head to the table saw. With the blade raised to slightly over half the height of the dividers, I can cut the notches. The blade is only an eighth of an inch wide, so to simplify the second cut, I just use a little shim. Some parts receive a notch in the exact same location and I can cut all of those at the same time. The pieces are then assembled inside the tray. We really don't need any glue or fasteners, just friction. Now let's fill this thing up. Am I the only one who clearly loses his mechanical pencils before he even has a chance to use the refills? So both trays are filled up and there's plenty of room to spare. Ever wish you could have more space in your drawers? 